guys, Preacher 357 here, finally out on the range doing some uh, testing with the Caltech P15 metal, the metal version. This is the aluminum frame version. They also have a polymer version, which uh, a viewer told me on the previous video I did, the tabletop on this, that I should have put a picture up of the uh, polymer version for comparison, and I meant to do that. Forgot. Just completely slipped my mind when I was doing the editing. So I'll make sure to do that now so that you can see uh, a picture of what the uh, polymer frame version looks like. And it's not a bad looking gun either. I prefer the uh, these wood grip panels though. I prefer the metal. It's just right up my alley. Uh, I, I like the aesthetics of, of this gun. The question is, uh, how does it perform? And we've looked at uh, a lot of the details on the gun, but we need to get it out here on the range and, and see how it functions. And uh, so far I've had one malfunction, and I call it a malfunction, the slide lock back. And that could have just been me. I may have accidentally engaged the uh, slide stop uh, while the slide was cycling. So that may have been user error. So I'm not gonna call that a, a malfunction on the gun. I'm gonna call that a malfunction on me. I malfunction quite a bit, so. Anyway, I have the gun here and I've adjusted the sight some. Uh, it was shooting uh, a little bit uh, low to point of aim, so I did some adjustments on it to get it where I wanted it, because I don't like to have to, to uh, aim high on a target. I'd rather take a 6 o'clock hold than a, than a 12 o'clock, so I made some adjustments on the sights to make it uh, a little bit more uh, the way I like it, and so I thought we'd just get out here and just do a little bit of shooting now with it and uh, see how I like it and uh, get my thoughts on it and uh, you know see if uh, if it's reliable you know that's the, the biggest thing are we going to have a lot of malfunctions or is it going to run you know like you would hope a $600 gun which is what this is uh, would run so without further ado why don't we do that but before we do that I'm just going to go ahead now and uh, remind you to check out the description there's a link there for the GOA the Gun Owners of America for a discounted membership you can get in the fight with the GOA on the national level for our gun rights. They also do a lot of work in the individual states as well. And I have a link there for the TFA, the Tennessee Firearms Association. If you live in the great state of Tennessee like I do, please join up with the TFA and uh, put in time and effort and money. We need money. Uh, fighting these battles is not cheap. And so, uh, you know, for uh, the fight, we have to have funds. There's just no way around it. As horrible as that is, is that you would need to have money to fight for your rights. Uh, it's just the, the truth of the matter. So if you would, uh, check out the description. And uh, those are the two organizations that, that I recommend, that I'm a life member of both. Obviously, if, uh, if there's other organizations that you like, there's some, some other good ones out there. But just get in the fight uh, because we need as many people as we can get, you know, putting pressure on our politicians. Uh, to make sure we keep the rights that we have and that we get more of our rights restored than we have now. So anyway, let's get over here and do a little bit of shooting. And I've got some magazines loaded up. I'll just be shooting Winchester White Box. They've had pretty good sales on this stuff, so I bought quite a bit of it. Not the greatest ammunition, but not the worst either. But should be a pretty good test. One thing I did notice about this gun that I don't think I demonstrated in the uh, tabletop was the loaded chamber indicator. That is uh, pretty easy to spot there. That rascal jumps up quite a bit over the top of the gun. So there's no doubt in your mind there's a round in that chamber. So it's uh, obviously you can see it and it's tactile, you can feel it. So, you know, that's a, a pretty good uh, loaded chamber indicator they put on this thing. So let's just do a little shooting here. We're gonna go out here to uh, to 20 yards here on the red plates. And this is the first time I've shot any of the plates uh, with this gun. I, all I've shot it on is paper so far. So uh, I may have to do a little bit of adjustment to, to see where I need to hold at this distance. That's 
not too bad for such a small gun. That's not too bad at all because this is a small gun. I mean, it's uh, one of your micro compacts. It's a little bit bigger than the original P365. Uh, I think I may have showed this in the last video. It's uh, a little bit more like the 365 XL in size. So a little bit bigger than the 365, but honestly, I'm pretty sure this thing weighs less. And I believe it, this is 16 point something. This is 17 maybe. So uh, it's a light gun, a really light gun, even though it's an aluminum frame. But uh, that's not too bad. Not too bad for a micro compact at 20 yards. You know, it's really not designed for this kind of distance that I'm shooting at. So you can't complain about that. Like a 35. It locked open and I'm pretty sure it did. I thought I was done. I checked the mag and there's still rounds in there. This round right here looks like it nosedived a little bit, maybe moved back and moved up in the mag. Hmm. So we had another instance where the mag locked back. Maybe that's just me. I'm gonna try to make sure I'm keeping my thumb away from it. I'm gonna put my thumb back here just to make sure. big 12 inch plate I'm gonna shoot a little bit differently just for that reason just to try to make sure it's not me I've actually got some of these sky magazines loaded up I've tried these before and they do work in this gun strangely enough but the, you know they're both based on the, the 59 series Smith and Wesson magazines this is the same mag that the uh, Celtic P11s used which you know, Sky adopted as well because Joe Roebuck, Joe Roebuck I believe, designed the, the uh, P11 as well as the Sky. We could have malfunctions with this, and if we do, I'm not going to consider it the gun's fault because I'm not using the magazine that came with it. Let's just try this, though. <laughs> happened there I think we're out I think the side just didn't lock back with those with that sky magazine no I may have a round still in the chamber there huh ah that was strange the cross pin the slide lock here that you pull out to disassemble it had popped out just a little bit. Yeah, it's empty. Somehow or another that had popped out. Maybe it's that Sky Magazine that caused that. I'm just gonna not use those anymore. Uh, we'll see if that happens anymore. Maybe that was just me using the wrong magazine, just testing it out, but. Let's load up a little bit more here in the correct magazines and do a little bit more shooting I mean so far I really like the way the gun shoots I might have it sighted in still where it's shooting just a little bit high I'm having to hold a little lower than I wanted to I thought I had it a little bit closer to what I like because I'm having to hold a little lower than what I generally want to it's a little below six o'clock but it's not so bad that I can't uh, I can't hit with it. I can make it work. But that's the thing about the gun. It does have a sights that are adjustable for windage and elevation. So if it's not hitting exactly where you want, you can make those adjustments. Which a lot of uh, you know these types of guns don't have adjustable sights. At least not for elevation. You might be able to drift them for for windage. 
Another thing I'm noticing is that I'm already seeing what looks to be maybe a little bit of scuffing in the finish. And I really haven't been shooting it that much. I'm kind of surprised about that, but uh, you know, a carry gun, obviously, it's not going to be perfect. My P365 has obviously got some marks on it, but I've carried that gun for over a year now as well. So maybe a question as to how well this uh, finish on the slide holds up. Because there are a few little marks on it, a few little places. Not that big a deal. Doesn't affect the function. But just the same. All right. Let's go over here to the cowboy, now at 35 again. I'm going to put my thumb back to make sure I don't hit anything. Well, I don't know where I'm going. May have been holding a little high. May have been still holding a little high there. All right, well, you know I got to waste ammunition. You know I got to do it. So I got to throw some out here at 100 yards and at 80 yards on these plates out here and see what I can do. You know, I'm not all that hopeful with a gun this size, but it does have at least a little bit longer barrel than like the, the 365. So maybe we can reach out there and, and actually hit something. Let's go out here to 100 and just see, just see if I can do anything with it. Well, there it is, first one hit. A little low. Yeah. That's not bad. That is not bad for a micro compact. Not bad at all. Of course, I had the, the longer uh, magazine here, the 15 round mag in. And uh, it does shoot a little bit better with that magazine. It's a little easier to control. It's got a little bit longer grip with it. But still, you know, I was hitting fairly consistency out at 100 yards with a small carry gun. And uh, you can't ask for much more than that. It's not what it was designed for, but uh, you know it's a fairly accurate gun if you can do that. And of course, having it shooting a little higher, high to point of aim is not bad out at that distance either, because you don't have to hold over quite as much as you would normally, because it's already shooting a little high. But that is not bad at all. I'm just wondering if I can hit that 12 inch plate at 80. A little bit closer, but half the size, so even more challenging. But let's see what I can do. Feeling kind of confident now. This gun is shooting so well. Only issue so far is just the slide locking back. And, uh,. Wonder what's causing that. I'm gonna put my thumb back like a revolver again so I don't accidentally engage it. Let's see. On my first shot. Good night. I had the range. Guys, that's impressive. I mean, that is absolutely impressive uh, that a gun this size has that level of accuracy that even a doofus like me can uh, hit something at 80 yards with it. And so far, the only real issue has been, well, you know, the slide locking back and then that strange instance where the uh, the slide lock cross pin popped out a little bit. That was kind of odd. 
Let's just continue over here a little bit. Yeah, I was even below the target and still hitting high on that one. Well, I touched it. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. And, uh, you know, the only thing I can say is I would probably adjust the sights again and bring that point of impact down just a little bit more. But uh, I think you can see just what little adjustment I'm having to make, you know, just by holding a little lower seems to be doing the job. But that, yeah, that slide lock, I mean, it just feels like it's a little loose now. Doesn't feel... It's tight in there maybe as I'd like because I, I felt I just snapped it back in a little bit there too. That may be an issue. I don't know. That with time, more rounds you fire, that thing may loosen up and start wanting to come out on you. Uh, maybe not. Maybe it won't ever be a, really an issue. I don't know. But it did lock the gun up just a minute ago. So The only other thing I really want to do is talk about the recoil because I, I, the people that I've seen online that talked about the gun talked about it being snappy and I mean that's to be expected uh, the thing only weighs I think 16.6 .6 ounces and the polymer version is only 14 and I think the the uh, P365 is 17 so you know a really light gun like this is going to have some recoil to it you know just like a, a, a J frame Smith & Wesson you know uh, one of their aluminum frame models like the uh, the um, 642 that I carry often you know that I have the name Smitty for you know my 642 that thing weighs like 12 ounces or something you know a 38 special out of a 357 Magnum revolver is nothing you know it, it's maybe a little bit more than shooting 22 but not a lot you know it doesn't have a lot of kick to it at all but you put one through a 642 and that sucker's snappy so it's the same way with these nine millimeters. If you were shooting a nine in a, in a full size gun, you think a nine's not all that, all not, not all that bad on recoil. But the lighter the gun is, obviously, the more recoil you're going to feel. And so it's just to be expected. It's one of those trade offs for carryability, for comfort, you know, for for getting that weight down so that it doesn't drag your belt down. You're going to get some more recoil but it's not uncontrollable. I mean, this gun is not, you know, just beating me up or anything. It does have a little snap to it, but it's not uncontrollable. And so I just want to compare it to the P365 and just see uh, if it feels all that snappy to me, because the way people talked, it was one of the, you know, the, the P15 was one of the worst uh, micro guns they had shot, you know, as far as recoil. And, I'm not sure I agree with that, so at least not with the metal frame. So I'm going to compare it to my uh, P365 here. We'll make them both hot. And we'll start out with the, uh, well, I guess we need to do apples to apples. The, uh, P365 is with the 12 round mag is the same length as the the standard P15 with the 12 round mag so I need to shoot the 12 round mag because the grip lengths are almost identical if I shoot the 15 round mag for the P15 then I've got a little bit more grip than I do with the P365 so it's not a fair comparison so we'll go back to the uh, the standard mag instead I am sweating. It is muggy out here. Really, really muggy. It's almost like it's summertime in the south. Almost like summertime in the south. 
All right, here we go. We'll shoot the, uh, the P-15 first. I'm just gonna shoot the Cowboy. I'm not really concerned about, about the accuracy or anything like that. We've kind of already seen how well it shoots already. I'm just looking at the recoil. All right. Not bad. Didn't feel like it was beating me up at all. All right. The P365 now, 12 round magazine. Honestly, I can't tell a lot of difference. I mean, neither one of them is, you know, just beating me to death. Um, they're both fairly comfortable guns to shoot. So, you know, I, I, I don't see why, what the complaint is. I guess I'll put it that way. I'm not sure why people think this gun is uncomfortable to shoot because uh, considering what it is, it just doesn't seem that way to me. Got one more mag here, the 15 round loaded up. I'm gonna shoot it, then I'm gonna let you guys go. I think for the most part I am satisfied. Um, some of these issues that we're seeing here is gonna take some more time to figure out. Um, you know, why the slide is locking back on, on a few occasions and this issue with the slide stop, the cross pin here, that, that kind of worries me because it did lock the gun up because it was just slightly out. And, uh, you know, that's just going to be a no-go for me if it's going to have uh, an issue with that. I don't want to pull the gun out and it be locked up because the slide stop has popped out a little bit. But that's going to take some more detailed testing. And uh, I have to come out here and put some more rounds through it and report back later what I find. Just go over here to... That's all the rounds you had, but I missed on the last shot, which obviously is not something I can do. So I do have this one magazine, the Sky magazine loaded up, so I've got to, I got to shoot it too. And I missed on the last round, once again. Isn't gonna do. Can't have it. One round in here. All right. There we go. Now we're done. All right, guys. Well, there she is. The Keltec P15. Overall, I, I have to say I like the gun. I have some concerns. Um, slide locking back and, and the cross pin. I'm just going to have to shoot it some more because obviously at this point I wouldn't be willing to carry this gun yet until I had that figured out. Um, and that's just the long and the short of it. Now, maybe you've got one of these and you've never had that issue and you, you feel perfectly fine with it. Because otherwise, it's a it's a really good shooting little gun. I mean, otherwise, I am quite impressed with it. I did not disengage the safeties, as I showed you in the previous video. They're they're still engaged, so that grip safety did not cause a an issue when I was shooting. But I think you can see here the barrel, quite a bit of wear already for how little I've actually shot the gun, and. Uh, so I kind of wonder about the the coating on the slide and the barrel and all that, how well it holds up. But those are mostly cosmetic things as long as they don't rust. So, you know, all in all, I like the gun. Uh, but it's going to require some more testing. That's all I can say about it at this point. So 
I mean, if you guys have got one of these and got a little bit more time with it, put some more rounds down range than I have. I've only shot a few hundred rounds so far. Let me know what you've uh, what you've discovered so far. But uh, I think Keltec's on the right track. I'm not sure if they're completely there yet. If they've got all the bugs worked out yet, maybe. But I think they are on the right track with this. And, uh, you know, I'm rooting for them. You know, there, there's there's no reason for me not not to want Keltec to do well. The more good gun companies we get out there putting out quality products, the better. Uh, and uh, I think this is a step in the right direction. Uh, but anyway, there she is. Keltec P15. Guys, I appreciate you coming out. God bless you. Y'all take care of yourselves, and we'll see you next time.